Well, welcome everybody to the Marketing Checklist Viewcast, where Sharon and Hank Uloff from Uloff Creative Marketing Solutions, uh, when you're looking to solve those marketing, sales, HR, and other challenges, uh, we are the small business coaches that you call. On this Viewcast, you will meet and learn from successful entrepreneurs who are out there making it happen right now. Right now. And here's how it works. Uh, if you've watched, and you've probably watched a few other episodes by the time you've got to this one, uh, you know how it works. We have pre-sent the questions to our guests. Uh, we've actually got their answers. So we're just going to go through it and chat with them. And we want to make them look good and, and give you some information that's going to help your business be the very best it can. Here's the kicker. The interview itself will be just seven minutes, 21 seconds long. Why 721? That's our anniversary yes, date. Yes, it is July 21st. So why don't we get started? Would you introduce our guest? Our guest today is Paul Finkelstein. Did I get it right? Absolutely. Perfect. Well done. For okay. The, for the 27th time. Yay, you got it right. <laughs> got it right. Awesome. Woo All right, Paul, keeping in mind that we only have a three-story building, what is your elevator story? That is such a great question. Where should I go with the elevator today? And it's only three stories. I help people become financially free on one side, and I help people look good on the other side. Excellent. I interesting. So tell us a little more. What is your business really all about? Well, a long time ago, my mom, my mom she was a CPA and a CFP and an MBA. And she worked her entire career with what I thought when I was 13 years old as a workaholic. Mm. And I always thought that she was a workaholic. I thought, oh, she worked too much. She worked till 11 o'clock at night. She worked all hours. I didn't understand that that really was the very definition of an entrepreneur to me. And that if you're just working by yourself in your own business or even an employee, it's actually more the employee than by yourself. You're self-employed. You're like there heading towards entrepreneurship. My sister, my family, we always called my mother an entrepreneur, but since she passed away early in her 70s from ovarian cancer, I realized, and I know your podcast might be audio, might be visual. I'll show some of her degrees that I put toward the ceiling in my office. So I feel like she's looking over my shoulder and continuing on the path of where she taught me for her MBA and CFP and, and uh, CPA. I didn't know that a CPA was one step away from a law degree. And she kept stressing over those years. And she wasn't afraid of anything. She wasn't afraid of lawyers. She wasn't afraid of business. She wasn't afraid of any size business, small or big, probably much like yourselves being in business. And to take those a step further or to continue the journey of helping people with all the bells and ins and outs of their retirement and what to expect tax-wise, not tax-wise, and doing financial needs analysis for people. You know, Name kind of change to protect the innocent, whether I'm with this firm or that firm, but it's still me. You know, my uh, my dad's pharmacy degree is hanging up in our, our guest suite, so I completely understand. Not having, why would it sit in a garage in a box and no family member really, it means nothing to them more than if you had worked with your family. Yeah. You're, you're proud of your mom. I'm proud of my dad. I absolutely understand it. So Paul, why should our listeners flock to you? Well, they always say that people flock to anybody because they like them and they get to know them and they trust them. And, and I imagine the listener probably isn't going to do all those things right away unless Hank and Sharon really loved everything about me and the way I look, even though we've met maybe a couple of times before. They said, what are the chances of somebody getting to know somebody? The first 10% of people actually are 10% of the time. We're really not necessarily a customer of somebody's. Usually it takes a little bit more follow-up. And I suppose that the listeners or you should flock to me if you feel that there's any kind of connection, we make each other laugh and there's some things in common. And then we stay in touch because I always think like when I met my wife that you could be one of three things. You could either be a resource because one of us knows more information about something that the other person doesn't know. 
You could be a date if you're dating. And if you're not dating, then it's a meet and greet where you spend a little bit longer of a time than the time that we're spending today, seven minutes, I think you said. <laughs> and it's another meet and greet, or you could be a client. The chances are not really right away to be a client getting to know us unless it's by referral. And then we sit down and do a meet and greet right away and see if there's more to go. So those three things are pretty valuable, I think, when meeting people. And I thought that should be my system years ago that I wish I had consistently. It would have been my system all along is put people into, sort people into three areas, resource, meet and greet, or a client. And then you never feel desperate for somebody to become a client at all, ever. You know, I can give you one other reason someone should flock to you. You have a really cool podcast. So why don't you share that URL now so we get that, that up front? Okay. Well, the podcast is omgtalk.com, which doesn't stand for what you think it stands for. It actually stands for online meet and greet. Pretty clever, eh? Which goes right back into sorting your sorting your people. Excellent. We're all sorting between friends and clients and colleagues and see how we're on earth for a very short amount of time. How let's make the best of it and do less complaining and more positivity. There we go. Yes, sir. So what other tips can you give to our, our listeners? You've already kind of sprinkled in some. What other tips do you got? What other tips? Well, if you have never started a podcast before, I think everybody should have one like they have a phone. And it's that easy to have a podcast and everybody has some interest. And it's it's so easy nowadays to use Zoom. Everybody can get a Zoom account and it gives you an audio file and a video file. Mm-hmm. And you immediately can put your video file up on a YouTube channel. And if you need help with YouTube, just call Hank. He already told us about all kinds of things that we could help you do that. And he has plenty of spare time to help you do that. <laughs> yes, I do. I have lots of spare time. Or some extra bucks, I'm sure. But doing a podcast is one thing, the technical side. The other technical side is getting you comfortable to actually facilitate the podcast. And maybe you might need to spruce up your public speaking a little bit or getting comfortable on a YouTube channel, seeing yourself on video for the first time could be daunting for some or even in person. So I would recommend Toastmasters, which I've been doing for six years in a row. I first heard about it 20 years ago. And I actually came out with a 24-hour helpline for speakers, a speaker helpline, if you will. And that's 866-443-0873 or locally at 561-243-1230. And literally, if you call that 24 hours a day while I'm sleeping or playing golf or on the beach, you could in two and a half minutes craft a speech in 30 seconds. So if you got a writer's block, Toastmasters is great, or you can call that 800 number, 866-443-0873, and give you an idea on how to craft a speech in 30 seconds. How about that for helping people? That's I- spectacular. Interesting. And so, if, you're, if you're just watching, the, the phone number is in the notes for this call. So, Paul, what's an amusing job title for you? Oh, I like that one. I'm glad I actually remembered some of the questions of the answers from that. Um, I don't know if I'm like, I'm like this spontaneous guy that I can never type out all of my answers to a speech. It has to be mostly spontaneous except for the beginning and the end. But I heard somebody say, and I think it was from India in a gavel club, which is a whole other long story about a type of Toastmasters club for under 18 year olds. And that is fun o meter or fun or happy chief happiness officer is another version. Maybe I might have said that before, but funnel meter and seeing where you are on your funnel meter. And I think that so many of us, we get working throughout life in the 40 year amount of time we spend in a career and we might, uh, our dream gets faded away and people are focused on bills. And if we can bring back or keep the fun and in our funnel meter, and see how that happens throughout life and business. Uh, what are the most common questions that people ask you about your business? The most common question about the side hustle with headshots for small business owners is how much. Yeah. <laughs> it is how much because, but unfortunately, they're comparing all 
photographers to each other the same way and same training and same background. And so price really is irrelevant in probably just about every career out there. But I think that's the first question people are trained at such a young age to ask. Yeah, so they can put their own value judgment on it. Uh, what's the most unexpected thing that's happened in your business? The most unexpected thing. This COVID pandemic thing where I decided to go from a, well, I did something unexpected, which was to have a mobile studio in a 25-foot bus without the 25 passenger seats and had studio backgrounds and everything go to small businesses or accountants or lawyers or doctors and they wouldn't have to leave their office and I wouldn't have to set up in their office and I used this bus to do that. Now with COVID, I decided to get rid of the bus, get rid of the overhead, get rid of the insurance, the storage facility. And I don't I realize I don't even need all that. I just take all the equipment I already have and the knowledge inside here and get people to be comfortable with how to get a good headshot so people look good in business. So what is, is that, is, what is that, does that tie into what your favorite tool is that you use in your business? I think my favorite tool, what would be my, I think my favorite tool has to be the Toastmasters experience. So many people, they think Toastmasters is just toasts. They might not even under first impression. What is that? Is it have to do with toasters? Is it just for new people and beginners? It's so untrue. I mean, it's just a matter of priorities. There's so many organizations people could join and so many service clubs people can join. But as far as value for your buck goes, if you go to a gym for public speaking and have a safe environment to practice speeches, whether they're five minutes long or a keynote, you only have time for the five minute, but you could turn a five minute into a keynote with various stories. And just being able to use it as a gym, you, your muscles get stronger, just like at the gym, your muscles get stronger by, by actually doing. You can't just pay a coach $10,000 to make me a better speaker. I think people do that all the time, but do they become a better speaker? I don't think so. I think that they might now know what to do, but now they have to go out and practice it. And what's the best four-letter word that describes what you do? This should be your shortest answer. <laughs> I, I hope it is because I, now I have to think of a four-letter word and if I actually put one on that sheet <laughs> let's was, see uh you did you you gave us two of them I gave you two four-letter words yep describe me yes do you want me to just give them to you happy that's, that's five good. um you had give and help <laughs> so you give help that's two no. Back to back. Um, they now, the next question you, you might have been thinking of, because what in your business makes you the most happy? What makes me the most happy? Can you tell me what I said first? <laughs> Meeting inspiring owners and entrepreneurs. And you are the very first guest who has asked us to go through the notes. <laughs> you, you know, I was, I've been thinking in some of the podcasts that I really don't need the guests' questions. All I need is one sheet of the questions, but yeah, we have yours. Wow. So there it is. Do you want to, would you like, would you care to expand on meeting inspiring owners and entrepreneurs? I mean, others, I mean, basically I didn't realize I was going to be, well, eventually in my own business. And I started at Morgan Stanley and they just said, here's a phone, go. And it was hardly expired inspiring. It was more expiring. It was more frustrating. It was more rejecting. And I think what got better over the years is I somehow picked up from somewhere. I started going to some speaker events and one was Jim Rohn in Atlanta, Georgia. I heard Jim Rohn speak, the late Jim Rohn. And I actually only got a chance to hear Zig Ziglar on a tape. Mm. And if you ever see an old book called See You at the Top, it's an old yep. book of Zig Ziglar's. If you get the audible version of Zig Ziglar on Amazon's Audible, I think, that is Zig in his, like five hours of Zig Ziglar, like having an old cassette tape. And, and you get to hear him say, and we'll see you at the top. I mean, that was the, <laughs> that was the, the, the phrasing and the, and the way he always put that. If you hope enough people get what you want, then you'll get what you want. Uh, what did you learn in nursery school that helps you the most? 
The first thing that comes to mind, what I learned in nursery school was to just play fair in the sandbox, do one to others as others was do one to you. I hope that's the most common answer, but I imagine there'd be complete opposites and fighting at the playground. Uh, yes, you, you put, uh, allow any, allow someone else to go on the monkey bars before you do. <laughs> so what what is, and do you have a number one fantasy lead that you could get? Someone is watching this and who do you want to speak to that would be a, a fantasy lead you could get? If I could speak to anybody around the world, I'd say if you could bring back Zig Ziglar and have him with me here, and I could actually meet him and talk to him, not just on the stage uh, visiting, I think that would be great. That would that would and also be Thomas great. Edison would be another close second, which is to ask him of all those 10,000 or 20,000 ways the light bulb didn't work, maybe I could ask Thomas Edison how he felt on re rejection and getting rejected 20,000 times. By the that. universe. Yeah, the, the physical universe rejected him that many times of just, hey, nope, try again. <laughs> For all so, the people, um, no, you can't do it, the light bulb. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be sitting here in the dark looking at each other. So is do you have an offer as we come to the end? Do you have an offer you would like to give to everybody as a way of starting a conversation with you? Absolutely. If anybody there would like, like Sharon and Shank have their podcast, if you guys are a small business owner, an entrepreneur, or professional, and you would like to be on a podcast for 15 minutes, or you just don't want to do your own podcast because it's just too technical and you don't want to spend millions of dollars to <laughs> Hank and Sharon, you can be on my podcast as well. And I'll put you up on YouTube as well as 12 other birthday presents, if you will, six different podcast platforms. If you'd like to be on Spotify because your friends are there, I'll put you on Spotify as well as be interviewed by a distinguished Toastmaster. And you all you have to do to do that is go to omgtalk.com and click on birthday present. And we've, we've been on the show and you are a wonderful interviewer. So I we recommend it. If, if you've never been on a, a podcast uh, and, and, and it was going to be your, if that was going to be your first, you would pick a really good one if you want. Paul. I thank you for that as well. I think that there are so many podcasters out there and they're all different categories and interests and causes. There we go. So well done. Another episode <laughs> in the can. Awesome. So go go connect with Paul. And Paul, one more time, that's omgtalk.com, correct? You got it. And my email is wow at omgtalk.com. Yeah. We used we used um omg and it, for us it used to be our marketing guy. So we had, we have our marketingguy.com. Uh so the the omg just works really well. So Take us home, babe. <laughs> so go connect with, with Paul at omgtalk.com and make sure you connect with us at howtogetthefaster.com. Yep, you can sign up for a free 30-minute success call with us and we can go over whatever is troubling you or wherever you want to get there faster in your business. And if you would like to be on the ViewCast as well, make sure that you let us know when you schedule time at howtogetthefaster.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you on the next episode of the Marketing Checklist ViewCast.